everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Caroline and I make sewing tutorials and sewing patterns to help you along your sewing journey. In the beginning of January, I posted a video where I shared with you guys everything that I sewed in 2023. And you guys really seemed to like it. It became the most watched video on my channel by far. And during that video, I shared some lace underwear that I had made. I didn't really think much of it, to be honest, but I received so many comments talking about them in particular, the underwire bra and the panties, but mainly the bra. So I decided to make a two-part series about it. For today's video, I'll show you how to make the bra and next week I'll show you how to make the panties. The only problem though is my lack of experience when it comes to bra pattern making. I'm good at making clothes that fit and I do wear a lot of clothes but I barely ever wear bras. I'm not sure if you guys have noticed but I don't have a lot to work with in the first place. So bras for me are usually accessories rather than functional clothing items that are made to give support. So as preparation for this video, I started to study more about bra pattern making and it's way more complicated than I anticipated. Not impossible, but just very specific. Because there are so many things that you have to get right. The band, the cups need to fit perfectly. And people usually use a lot more materials than I have used in the past when I was making them for me. Like power net, mesh to line the cups and the band to give more support. And my version doesn't really have any of that. It's basically just made with stretch lace and elastic. And of course, you can line it if you want to make it more sturdy. But I'm not completely sure how much support the version with just the stretch lace would give to people that have bigger cup sizes than I do because I haven't really made this design for anybody else yet but I do plan on continuing to study bra pattern making and eventually come up with a graded pattern for this specific design. It will take a little while though because I do want to make it right but if this is something that you'll be interested in please let me know in the comments and of course when the time comes I will need pattern testers more than ever to make sure everything is okay so if you'd like to be notified when there's a new pattern to test I'll put a link in the description so you can fill with your email account but for today's video I'll show you how how I made a pattern for my underwire bra and I'll also give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how you can sew it from scratch. It isn't the easiest thing in the world but it actually looks harder than it actually is to make, I promise. So before we go to pattern making, I'm going to share the list of materials with you. To make this style of bra, you're first going to need stretch lace. The amount will be a little bit different depending on the size that you make and the width of your lace. For myself, which I think would be around the size small, I use around one and a half meters of lace. And the quality of the lace is really important because if it's really thin, it might not be the best fit for this. The one that I have is really sturdy and stretches out a lot, so I know it's a good option for this. You also need a pair of underwires that fit you really well. There there are so many different shapes of underwires. I'm going to be using this one for myself and it's made out of plastic. You also need strap elastic and the amount varies from person to person as well, but for myself, one meter was more than enough. I'll use half a meter for each side. You need two rings and two sliders to make the straps adjustable. And the width of the rings and the sliders has to be the same as the strap. And you also need one hook and eye closure. The size is up to you. Under wire channeling, you usually don't need much of that. So if you have like one meter laying around, it's going to be more than enough. And lingerie elastic, you can choose either fold over elastic or pico elastic. It totally depends on what you can find and whether you like the look of one more than the other. And this is optional, but you can also add embellishments if you want. I'm going to be adding some tiny bows to it to make it look pretty and I personally haven't really done that But if you like you can also line the cups and the front band with mesh to help give extra support now Let me show you how to make the pattern So for the bra pattern you need to take some of your measurements and the first one is the under bust measurement And to get that you can measure around your rib cage right under the bust just for reference mine is 75 centimeters the second measurement we need is the bottom cup depth and for that you need to measure the vertical distance between your nipple and the crease under your bust where the wire will be placed and you need to follow the natural curve when you're measuring it with the tape mine is seven centimeters the third measurement is the top cup depth and you have to measure the vertical distance between your nipple and the top of your breast or at least as much coverage as you would like for the bra. Mine is three and a half centimeters. The fourth measurement is the center gore which is the distance in the middle of both of your breasts. For mine I'll use two centimeters but that will be different depending on the person too. And you'll also need an underwire that fits you really well so we can use as a guide to draft 
the curve of the cup. The lace I'll be using is very stretchy, so I will reduce the underbust measurement by around 10%. And again, I don't know for sure if this pattern making method would work really well for any other type of materials because I have only ever made it with stretch lace. So to reduce the underbust, I'll multiply it by 0.9, which is 67 and a half. And I'll also take away the measurement of the closure in the back, which in my case is six centimeters. And I'll divide it by two because we'll only draft half of the pattern. And I'll also add two centimeters to this amount so I can take in from the sizing later just to fit the body better. So I'll add two centimeters here. And the total was 32.75 centimeters. I drew a line with a measurement and I'm going to mark the middle point. And I'll also mark half of the gore measurement here as a guide. So my gore was two centimeters, so I'm making it one here because it's half of the pattern. And now we can place the underwire on top. I will mark one centimeter to the gore that we marked just as an extra ease for the underwire. It doesn't have to be perfect, just so the underwire has a little bit more space later and I'll trace it. And I'll extend the line until it reaches the gore. And I'll also extend the line of the underwire at the sides around two and a half centimeters. But that's just preference. You don't really need to do that. The reason why I'm doing it is because this underwire that I'm using is not a full curve. It doesn't go all the way around the bust. It only stays at the bottom part. So I'm adding more at the bottom so I have more space to cover my entire bust. But if your underwire is more curved, let me take another one that I have in here as an, as an example. Like this one, for example, it goes way higher than the other one that I have. But this one is not really the right fit for me. It kind of digs at my side, so I don't really like using this one. But for the style that I want, I'm making it higher at the side so I have more coverage. So remember the two centimeters that we added to the total? I'm going to mark it here and square it upwards. And for the band, I'm going to mark it two centimeters down from the line that we marked. You can make yours thicker if you prefer, but this is just enough to fit the underwire and still be a little bit more delicate. But if you want, you can make it wider. I interest rate those marks down because they are actually supposed to be at the bottom one, not here. I made a little mistake. And now upwards from the edge, you can mark the width of your closure. In my case, it's three centimeters. So that's what I'm going to mark here. And now I can connect this line to this line with a curve. And it kind of matched right at the scene where I glued the sheets of the paper together, but this is the center. <laughs> that we marked and I'm going to connect it to each side. So in yellow we have the front band and in pink we have the back band. And you can mark here where you would like your strap to be placed. In my case I like to make it around five centimeters away from the edge but that will be different depending on your size so I would recommend you trying it on making a twile of course always and if you need to move it around you can alter it on the pattern later now let's make the cup pattern there are more professional ways of making the cup i guess if you have a bra pattern that you already like to fit you could use that and i'll admit this method is not the best if your fabric isn't stretchy like mine but this is something that works really well for me and it probably will work for you if your body has a similar shape to mine too so as i was testing it I made the cups with two different methods considering the design of the bra. One where the top part of the bra was more straight across. And another where it was more angular with this part right here being added to the side. I like them both, but my favorite, I guess, is this second one here. I'll start by showing you how I made the pattern for the second version here with the higher side. I lowered around two centimeters at the center. You can lower more if yours is bigger. This will be the top cup, the top band. And I connected it to the side with a straight line. And now from around the middle of the bottom upwards, I'm going to measure my bottom cup depth. And I connected it with a curve. Then here, I measured around two and a half centimeters. And later you can make this curvier here so it's smoother, but I measured two and a half centimeters upwards and I connected it to the center. And from the middle down, I'll measure my top cup depth and I'll also connect it with a curve to this part and this part. 
So in purple, I have the bottom cup and in green, I have the top cup. And if you want to make it straighter across, you don't want to add this at the sides. Instead of adding two and a half centimeters upwards, you can measure it down at the wire mark. And then you do the same thing. You just connect it to the center of a curve. So the bottom cup will be this big and the top cup would be this big. And the only difference when sewing is that if you're making the straight across method, you need to sew the entire bottom part of the cup to the band. After you sew the top cup and the bottom cup together, you're going to sew the entire bottom of the cup to the top of the band. It's not going to have anything left here. And if you're making it with the extra side, you need to sew the bottom of the cup to the band only until the center seam of the cup here. The side of the top cup is going to be finished later only with the elastic. And for the seam allowance, you need to add one centimeter here for the underwire channeling, one centimeter here for the side seam, one centimeter at the bottom of the top cup, one centimeter around the bottom cup. And here the size will depend on the elastic you have. If you use fold over elastic, you don't need to add seam allowance to this side because it won't take away any of the measurements. But if you're using pico elastic, you need to add the width of the pico elastic, like one centimeter here as well, because we will fold it inside later to finish it and it will take away the sides. I will personally add less than one centimeter because I want the seams to look a little bit more delicate. But if you use one centimeter seam allowance, I recommend trimming the seam allowance later so it doesn't look too bulky. Now let's go sewing. So just for reference, my lace is 17 centimeters wide and I folded it so the right side, the side that's going to be facing the outside, is in the middle. And I tried to match the lace edge the best way that I could. Now I'm going to place the center band on the fold here. And I'm placing the edge of the paper right at the bottom of the lace edge. And one thing that you have to make sure, at least on the front band and the back band, is that this part right here needs to have around the same distance because some lace edges are more intense. They have more curves. So you have to make sure that it's not, for example, here because then the side is going to have a different length. This is going to be longer than this. The curve of my lace is not that intense, so it doesn't make that much of a difference. But if your lace has a bigger curve, then pay attention to that. Make sure to remember which one is the center and which one is the side. So now we're going to start by sewing the cups. I'm going to place them right sides together. And so here, I will always recommend you testing your stitch beforehand because this fabric is very elastic. So in my case, my machine has a lot of stretch stitch options. I'm going to use this one that simulates a straight stitch, but you can try and use a regular zigzag stitch if you don't have this option. And now I'm going to sew them. As you can see, the stitching isn't ripping. It's very strong and sturdy. And my seam allowance was not that big. So if you did leave one centimeter seam allowance, I would recommend you trimming in half. And now I'm going to put the seam allowance towards the bottom part and top stitch it so it stays more clean. If you prefer, you can also trim the seam allowance after top stitching because I feel like it's going to give you more room to sew on top of, so it's going to be a little bit easier. But I'm going to fix those edges to make it look better inside. If you'd like, you can also use the elastics to cover it. I think it's a cute design style, but since mine is too thick for the size of my cups, I think it looks too bulky, so I'm not going to use it this time. And now I'll sew the sides, placing the right sides together. And I'll do it the same way that I sew the cups. And now it's time to sew the cups to the band. I'll match the center and I'll try to distribute it evenly. This part, I admit, is probably the hardest one to sew. 
I use a lot of pins and I distribute it evenly. And the curves have the same measurements, so they're supposed to meet at the center and at the sides with no problem. And this time you can use a straight stitch to sew. You don't have to use a stretch stitch like a zigzag stitch because we're going to sew the boning channel later. This is one of the hardest steps, but if you go slowly, I don't think there will be a problem. And this time, please make sure to not stretch the fabric while you sew because if you stretch it, there's a chance that the bottom curve is going to be longer than we anticipated. So try to just feed it naturally to the machine. Always making sure to look at the bottom so you're not sewing anything folded. Go very slowly, no need to rush. Always adjusting. So I cut two strips of the underwire channeling that are around the same size. And as you can see, there is an angle that the underwire channeling curves naturally. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the inside part of the underwire channeling and place it right on top of the stitch line that we made. And as you can see, the underwire channeling has this guide right here, which is where you're supposed to sew. It's right at the edge, so try to sew it as close as you can here while it's placed right on top of the stitching that we made beforehand. I don't know if you can see the stitch line here. Trying to place it on top. And make sure to adjust the bottom as well so you're not sewing on top of anything folded. Pull it backwards and don't pull it either. As I said, don't do this while sewing. Don't pull it here and then place it. Just let it stay naturally and pull the underwire channeling. Mine doesn't stretch. I don't know if others that you purchase out there is stretchy, but mine isn't, so it's very firm. So I can pull it without worrying that it's going to deform. And I'm going to trim any seam allowance that might be peeking out. And now that the seam allowance is smaller, we have to sew at the other edge here. This time on your top stitching, just make sure to spread the lace so there isn't any fold underneath. I'm not saying that you should pull it so it's stretched, just spread it so it's like straight. Now I can add the underwire. Make sure you're putting it correctly. This is the center and this is the side. Now we can put it aside. So we can start working on the adjustable straps. The straps have a shiny side. The plus side is supposed to be towards your skin and the shiny side is supposed to be facing out. So with the plus side facing up, You're going to put the sliders like this and we're going to fold it like this and stitch it here. Now you put the ring on and with the plush side facing up, you're going to put through the two holes again, like this. The first one and now the second one. And now your strap is adjustable. You can just pull it here and it will become bigger. Now we need to finish this part right here and I'm going to use Pico Elastic. So we have to place it with the plush side of the elastic facing up and the Pico detail facing down. I'm trimming this part just so it's not too bulky. Now I'm gonna sew the elastic here. You have to place the elastic on the right side of the bra with the plush side facing up. And I like to leave a little bit, a little tail here so we can add the strap later. And make sure the underwire is not here because you cannot sew on top of it. Mine is really close to the edge, so I'm going to push it. Now I have more space to sew. And this time I'm going to use a zigzag stitch. 
I don't know if you can see it properly, but this right here, those two dots are a guide that I made. So from where my needle is, there is a six centimeters distance from the first dot and seven and a half centimeters distance from the second dot. So the first dot and the second dot are one and a half centimeters apart. To have a constant stretch of the elastic, I always put my finger on the first one and I pull until my finger is on the second one. So from here, this is the natural elastic. I'm going to pull a little until my finger is on the same direction as the second dot. So I'm stretching one and a half centimeters for every six centimeters that I'm going to sew of elastic. And now we just have to sew it very slowly. You don't need to hurry. I sewed it on both sides. And since my elastic and my fabric have a different color, I kept the bobbin thread as black and I changed the top thread to white so we can match the top. And what I'm going to do now is just fold it like this and top stitch the elastic. And make sure you're pulling and spreading it the same way that you were before. Off camera, I just did a little stitch on the strap around six centimeters away from the edge of the back. As you can see, I placed the plush side facing up and the shiny side facing down. And I stitched the part that doesn't have the ring to it. Now we need to sew the elastic to the bottom of the band. You can use fold over elastic or you can use the picot elastic that we used at the top as well. So I'm going to fold it and sew it here using the same method of stretching that I showed you before. Six centimeters and pulling one and a half. I'll make sure to sew it under the underwire channeling, not on top of it, so we don't sew on top of the bony. And I'll also make sure to sew right on top of the bottom of the strap. So the edge that is not finished is covered by the elastic. And I also stitched it right at the top. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see. Now make sure your strap is not twisted. Fold the bra the way that it's supposed to be with the shiny side facing out like this. And put the elastic of the front through the ring. And stitch it here. Once again, making sure that it's not twisted and the shiny side is facing out. Now we can add the hook and eye closure to the back. The part with the hook must be facing towards your skin, like this, so towards the inside. And you stitch it here. So this one, this is the part that is supposed to be in contact with your skin, so this is supposed to be facing down and this up. And I stitch it here as well. I also added my label. And now all there's left to do are the finished touches. So this you can cut really close to the edge if you prefer, but I'm going to fold it outwards because I'll be adding a bow so it will cover it. And I will stitch it here, a straight stitch here just to secure it in place. And now I'm just going to use this bow right here to cover it up. So I'm going to place it on top and use a zigzag stitch here to secure it in place. So I really hope you guys liked today's video. Don't forget to tune in next week as well so you can learn how to make the panties to complete the set. It's way easier to make than the bra, I'll tell you that. And if you'd like me to work on a graded pattern for this design, please let me know in the comments. If this video was helpful to you, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope to see you guys around next time as well. Bye!